Thank you. So, um, I was I was taking a look uh, yesterday at kind of uh, who was who was here, and, and uh, so I've got uh, some slides I want to go to, but really what I wanted to talk about was getting into code. Uh, so just bear with me; these slides are more just a general overview of, of uh, WPCLI. So. Um, does everybody know what WPCLI is? Is there anyone that doesn't? No, I guess it's a better question. I already a couple people. So uh, WPCLI is just a, a set of commands you can run um, uh, on a command line. Uh, so you, you actually command line into a box, you SSH into a box. Uh, we're going to be using varying uh, vagrant vagrants today uh, to, to go over that. Uh, so these aren't scary, so don't, don't feel alarmed. I think uh, everybody in here has probably been on the command line at one time or another, uh, and they're pretty cool to, to do. Uh, so, so really quick, just so you know what SSH is, it's a connection from your local computer uh, to some other device, uh, another computer. Uh, we're going to simulate that just on my laptop, uh, so I'll explain that. Um, and it's secure. Uh, so how do I SSH? That's probably the most important question I get, um, or how I get started is how do I SSH in? Uh, so I'm on a Mac, uh, so you can use Terminal or iTerm. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can use Putty, and if you really want to be adventurous and do it on the <laughs> iPhone, uh, you can use uh, Prompt2. Uh, so to get started with WPCLI, you first have to install it. Uh, you just go here, there's great instructions. Uh, there's a lot of hosts, though, that already, already pre-installed them. Uh, we, we have the web uh, already pre-installed, so it's there and ready to go. Uh, running a command is as simple as running WP, a command, then a subcommand, and some sort of a parameter after that. Uh, and so really that's what that, thank you. Uh, that's what this looks like is, hey, the param is required, uh, you have an optional flag, and then sometimes an optional flag with its value. Uh, so the biggest one that, that uh, I use, WP core. Uh, so, so the core is, you can do things like check the current version of WordPress. Uh, you can see if there's updates available. Um, you can do the update. Uh, you can install a brand new site. Um, you can even convert an existing site to multi-site. And then you can verify checksum. So if, you're, if you've gotten hacked, uh, you, can, you can verify that WordPress is intact. Uh, so, so some things that you can do with core uh, you can set up a brand new site on a development uh, server. Uh, these are the ways to get that started. You run WP Core Download, you then run config, to create your config uh, and then you hit create, just create the database, and then install. Uh, so it also has plugins. Uh, with plugins, you can install and delete plugins, you can activate and deactivate plugins, you can update plugins, and you can even search uh, the repository. Uh, and these are probably the two biggest time savers. Uh, it's WP plugin update all. So this will update all plugins that are, are available for updates. Uh, and then if you get a white screen of death or you have some weird issue that you think is plugin related, you can run WP plugin deactivate dash dash all, and that'll actually deactivate everything. Um, there's database commands. So you can run uh, WP DB export and then give it a file name. Now actually create an uh, uh, export of your database. You can also import that database. So if you're moving, migrating from, from server to server, you can do that. And if you want to get into actual uh, the nitty gritty of MySQL, WP DB CLI will get you in there. All right, so enough of that. Let's go into uh, the command line. <coughs> Everybody see that okay, or do you want to put a little bigger? Slightly bigger. Okay. Uh, Alright, how's that? Pretty good. Alright, so I've got Vagrant uh, installed, and for Vagrant, when you're on a local computer to get into it, it's just Vagrant SSH, and this will log you in. Uh, typically, you would have you know SSH, your username, an IP address or a domain, and then you'll have to put in your password. Uh, so once I'm in here, 
I can actually go into uh, our my WordPress directory. So I'll do. All right. So this is. You can see this looks like a WordPress directory. Uh, so we can run some commands in here. Uh, WP core, for example, will give you kind of an output of, of the available subcommands. You can do things like check update, config, download, etc. If we run one, uh, we can see if there's an update available. All right, so you can see the success is that it's at the latest version. That means there's no updates to, to do for this WordPress, um, which is great. We're, we know we're up to date. Uh, so let's look at plugins a second. Uh, if we do plugin lists, we can see all the plugins that are, are at least uh, downloaded for this uh, WordPress. Um, you can see that both of these are, are inactive. So if I wanted to activate Kismet, I could do plugin. I'll do help so you can see the commands. So you'll see there's there's activate in the first one. So plugin activate. Uh, and then we just type in the name, so Kismet. And it tells us that it's uh, activated. So how do we use this to uh, start um, an install? Let me make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, what I do every time I install uh, WordPress is I have uh, this bash script. This bash script uh, is not scary either. Uh, you can download this. Uh, what this actually allows you to do, though, is go through uh, a common set of plugins. Uh, so in this case, I've, I've actually pre-populated this with just about every plugin uh, that I have. Uh, but we can run this on the environment so that we're able to get a little bit ahead of ourselves as we create a new WordPress site. Uh, so to run that, So it's going to ask me for a bunch of information. Uh, in this case, it's at, asking me to install if I want to install this plugin. So as I have a client that's working with this, this uh, site, I know uh, if I want to adminize, I can say yes. And it's going to go through and install it. And the PHP notices because I'm using um, this, it, it's a vagrant thing. That usually doesn't come up. Uh, so what did it do here? Uh, it installed. Uh, first off, the, the latest version. It then downloaded um, and, and used the cache file. Uh, so I've already used this once uh, on this box. So the nice thing about WPCLI is it's going to say, hey, I've already got this locally. Let's not go back out to the internet to re-download it. Let's just use that cache version. So it did that. Uh, it then unpackaged, uh, uh, unpacked the package. It installed the plugin, and then I go back here, I actually said just activate it, because I don't want to have to, to download it and then activate it, right? So I did that. Now it's asking me to, if I want to install members. Uh, so I can say yes again, and it'll install. Okay. So it installed that. Now, I can keep going, right? And this is just asking me, if I say no, um, it's going to ask me if I want to install the next plugin. If I say yes, it's going to install. Uh, oh, cache didn't do it. Um, blue user switching. So it's, it's going to go through, and I can keep going through all of my list of plugins uh, I, I want to use on a reinstall. Um, this is pretty easy. It, it, it's just a, um, you know, give it a question. So would you like to install plugin X? Um, read the output of that file and then uh, run this WP CLI command. 
Uh, is there any questions about this script? No. Yes. Is there a link? Uh, is there a link? Yes. So these are all. These will all be on GitHub. Uh, uh, GitHub.com slash uh, and I'll include a link uh, at, at the end of this. Um, so I'm going to make this go a little bit faster. Uh, instead of having to ask if I want to install, um, I'm going to run the script again. But this time, I'm just going to have it go and install all these plugins. I don't have to answer yes every time. Um, if it's already been installed, you'll see the warning uh, right up here uh, that it was already, I've already installed it. Now, this takes just a few minutes, um, depending on how fast the internet is, to show you that they're installed. <coughs> we'll go here. start to see that they're already activated as well. So pretty cool, right? I didn't do much work and installed a ton of plugins uh, so that I'm now able to get my site up and going. And it's still going to go and do these for a while. So is there questions about installing plugins and activating them? license key. So uh, certain plugins have uh, can actually write into WPCI, so the minute it's activated, um, you can run another command to, to do that. Um, I don't believe the ones I've got on here do that, uh, but there are some. I think uh, if you go to uh, GitHub WPCLI, there's a, a list of third-party uh, commands that you can do. Yeah? There would be options. Yeah, there's the options to add or update. Okay. You can update the options table. That's usually what I start with. All right, so I just beeped at me and told me that everything was, was activated. So you can see I've got, if it decides to work, I've got roughly 13 plugins activated out of that, that single script. All right, so I'm going to come back to plugins. Uh, a second, but let's actually run a backup. Uh, this is this is kind of where, uh, from a, a managed hosting perspective, you, you're going to want to do. Um, so I'll walk through the script first, and then uh, come to it. Uh, so this this is essentially all we need to do to do a backup. Uh, so you'll notice um, I, I always echo out some commands. I'm usually paying attention to when these run. Um, at least at first, and that also gives us an idea of what it's actually doing. Um, so this first date is actually just giving me today's date of, of uh, uh, through through Bash. Um, I then export it uh, to the database to a SQL file. I then tar up the entire directory, including the SQL file, and then I just move it to a backup folder I have on my uh, server. Um, in a real world scenario, what I've actually, what I would do in this case is not just move it to a uh, backup uh, folder on this server, as I'd actually have a, a mount somewhere else, and that, that way it would be an off site backup. Uh, and then finally, I remove that backup. <coughs> so uh, let's run this really quick just to show you that. All right, so this is going to be quick, so I put in a little uh, sleep instance just so that. I don't know if you'd be able to uh, change your font color to yellow or something. Or it's really hard to see. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I was just going to see if I could switch it to. All right, so where do I leave off backups? Let's check uh, my backup folder really quick. All right, so it looks like it didn't do backup, so we'll just run it again. Stop removing the backup first. And then we'll work one more time. So, once the script is fixed, uh, what this actually allows us to do is we can set this as a cron job, and then every night it can run, or every X amount of time it can run, and you've got yourself backups. All right, so if we check this again, Oh, it's www slash There you go. All right, there we go. So I apologize, it's green, the backup. It just gave us backup dash and today's date, 3-20-2016. So you could, you could tar this up any way you want. You don't have to tar it up as a GD. You wanted to do it as a zip, you can do it that way as well. All right, so that's backups. Now let's come back to plugins because maybe I don't need all these plugins anymore. Yeah. About the cron, does it kind of depend on what your host is, how you set that up? Like, do you do that through SSH or the? So, yeah. So, so most hosts that offer SSH access. Let me repeat the question just for the uh, video. But the, the question was kind of around how um, you set up crons. Uh, so with with hosts, DigitalOcean, uh, Liquid Web, somebody that gives you uh, SSH access, you can usually just go into a cron tab for that user account and they create it that way. Um, and then you can set it up to run this script X amount of times, daily, nightly. Uh, you, know, you, could, you could even modify the script. So I did a full backup, but maybe you only want a database backup or you just want a content backup. You could easily modify um, <coughs> lines 9 and 10 to, to be changed depending on what you're All right, so I've got some plugins, and, and maybe I need to deactivate some. Uh, maybe there's an instance where, hey, this site is just running really slow. Um, so I can go in and say, we'll do a plugin list again. Uh, this will show us all the plugins installed. It'll also show us um, the status of them. So I'm going to deactivate a couple here. Uh, we'll just do admins. Um, you can also kind of uh, chain these together. So if I wanted to do multiple in one command, um, I can I can do this. So I can do jetpack uh, and stockbox. 
So if I deactivate these, it'll tell me, it spits it out, hey, these were successfully deactivated. If I run a plug-in list again, we'll see the status and then it'll All right. Uh, one thing I didn't install with this is a theme. So anybody got a theme uh, in the, we'll do WordPress directory that you like to use? Underscore. Is that in the directory? I don't think that's in the directory. We'll do 2016. Let me make sure it's not installed on this one. If not, I'll remove it. Actually, I'll do, I'll do 2013. So, Here's what theme options are available. We can activate, delete, and single. Pretty similar to the way the plugins just work. Uh, and we can search. So I don't remember. We do search 20. I'll just search that way. We're going to get a list back from the WordPress.org uh, directory of all the plugins that have something related to 20. Uh, so we can see here's 2016 through 2012. So we'll go ahead and install uh, 2012. Uh, it's important that we have this slug because that's how it installs. So if I copy that and do theme install, we can install it. We can check back here just to make sure it's installed. Now you'll notice I didn't activate it. There was no activate. Um, so here's 2012. I can activate it right in here, or I can go back to the WPCLI and activate it there. Let me get rid of some of these lovely messages. All right. So that's uh, themes. Um, I have to do one. Here a second. Let's get the next one to work. <coughs> As I see, I didn't, didn't have a plugin that needed to be updated. So give me a second. All right. So as a managed host, or, or as you're using uh, WPCLI to, to run your own uh, box, you may come across a time where you want to just update plugins. Uh, so I have a script that, that allows you to check a list for updated plugins. Uh, that's this command right here. Uh, and then <coughs> ask you if you want to update them. And if you do, then we can update all of them. So let's show that. <coughs> All right, so th what this is doing is it's querying our local plugins and looking for uh, update available here. And I can see that I have one that's updatable. So if I click yes, it's going to go download, it's going to turn on maintenance mode, and then it's going to update. And then we can see that I put in a, a fictitious number, and it actually updated to 3.18. Uh, so that's how you would update a plugin. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you how to do uh, core, because I don't have uh, in this box a, a WordPress that is not um, an old version anymore. Uh, but essentially it would just be, right, this is how we checked to make sure there was an update. We would just change check update to update, and we would then be able to update WordPress. Before we do that, though, it's probably good to, to run that backup script just so we have backup, right? So we can, instead of just using a cron job, we can actually manually back it up. Would, yeah. would update not automatically go ahead and reinstall the files even if it's the latest version? Say you uh, got hacked and there's some malicious code in there. Sure, let's when, try. When it already just go ahead and... It might. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> it's a good question. I have not tried that. 
Uh, it tells us it's up to date. But that's probably the same success you would get. Anyway, it so doesn't so actually download the file, so it's checking the version of WordPress. Um, we could do because I know on the back end there's a reinstall file. Yeah. So I was I just figured it, that would do the same thing. Let me make sure I have the right. <coughs> so if we were hacked, we could do verify checksums, and this would actually go back uh, and check the files on our our install to the files that WordPress.org would deliver, and we can see this line that it, it verified. So we would know that we're not hacked. If I were to go in and change something, um, I'll just see if this works. So it gave me a warning, hey, this WP mail that I edited real quick didn't verify it because I threw some extra text in there. No, no, can you do the update? No. So I'm going to rerun the checksums and it, it should have probably changed the file. Oh, it, no, it, it, would, it would usually spit back out if it was downloading again. I could do. And there's already a file there, so you'd have to manually go in. Uh, all right, so we made that file better again. We should be able to check it, and it'll, it'll run fine. Okay. So uh, there's also, if I had uh, a core update. It's a very similar script, right? It's just going to run. It's going to first check if there's an update. If there is, then you can run the update. Uh, so I have another script in here that is install. So um, let's say you have a new client, you have a new customer, and you want to actually run uh, that install. Um, this this script and it's rather long. Uh, it asks for some information and then it goes and creates. Uh, the site and, and the folder on that. Um, so we'll walk through that as we go and install it. All right, so this is going to walk us through just some more questions, right? So let's give it a database name. Uh, we can give it a username. Password. <coughs> uh, and then um, that actually goes in and creates the database. So our database is all set up and ready to go. Now we need to go download and install WordPress. So we give it a site name, give it a username, give it a password. Email. And what it's done at this point is just captured that data so that when we run, uh, as we're ready to run this install, it's going to go in and, and make all, all the changes. Um, so if we say yes, it's going to download, it's going to create a config file, it's going to install. Um, this one also installs underscore s for those that were wanting that. Um, I now need to give it a directory, which uh, this was actually, this part uh, is broken on Vagrant. It should have done this automatically. Um, but what this is, is for is it's going to go create uh, the Nginx config in Vagrant. Um, so don't, th this barking at, at me is, is saying, hey, I can't do it in Vagrant. I can do it on a, a, a regular VPS. Uh, with that, I've barely done any work, and I've gotten my site up and running. All right. So you can see that um, 
WC, WPCI, excuse me, is pretty, pretty handy to, to do a lot of that. And with a little bit of work, we can uh, start to manage our own host. I've showed you how to, to do updates, I've showed you how to do backups, I've showed you how to do um, installs, so when you need to install a new server, or a new site rather, um, and you can use those tools uh, with a little bit extra work to really get into um, hosting your own server. So, I'm AJ, I work for Liquid Web, uh, my Twitter's AJ Morris, uh, that's my email. So, thanks. Did you say you were going to tweet out the... Yeah, I'll tweet uh, out on Twitter with uh, the GitHub repo at this point. Okay. Yeah. For setting this up on a box with like cPanel or WHM, how, how do you do that? Uh, so the, the biggest piece is to, um, with, with cPanel and WHM, you'd want to somewhere put these scripts. So, Get clone, clone them to a folder. Um, and you have to install a certain way so that it's like usable on every other cPanel account that you SSH to? Like you can put it in the user slash share folder? You could. And then you'd have to, in WHM, share that folder out to each individual yeah. cPanel user. Okay. Or run it as root. Or run it as root. Okay. Yeah. yeah, part of mine actually requires me to run that as root, and that's why Vagrant yelled at me. Uh, <laughs> Is there a question over here? Okay. Is there a way to uh, detect all WordPress installs throughout the server? Okay. Just to like, no, like so, them all and then... Yeah, so the way that WPCLI would work is you have to be in the directory of a WordPress instance. So you, you wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't know until it's in there. It <coughs> spit out. Um, if I go into, this, this uh, folder, I'm just in my www root. If I try to run uh, a command, it's going to come back um, and basically tell me, hey, there's WordPress not installed. But it could run it easily, write a bash script. You could write a bash script, yeah, so and figure that out. Through it, and then it could call each WP seal off the need. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Question over here. No? Okay. Thank you.